Let's take a look at lesson three, in which we'll look at the fourth word, keep the Sabbath holy. Listen for this beautiful text, Exodus 20, verse eight and following. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work. You, your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock, or the alien resident in your towns. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, but rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. The word of the Lord. It is impossible to overestimate the importance of Sabbath for our ancestors and for Jewish life throughout the ages. It's woven into the heart of who we are in the Judeo-Christian tradition. It is gift and mercy and wild justice all rolled into one. Now the word Sabbath in Hebrew simply means to stop, to cease, and is woven into the very fabric of creation. A number of years ago, when I was pastor of First President in Birmingham, my staff and I, about once a month, would go for a day of prayer to a small Benedictine convent that was about an hour's drive north of the city. We were an old downtown church, and we'd drive out into rural Alabama, a little town called Cullman, Alabama. And in the mornings, often we would spend time together. We'd ref as a staff, we'd reflect on scripture a little bit. We'd pray for what was going on in the life of the church. And in the afternoons, we'd have our time for silence. And every once in a while, one of the sisters in the convent would come and sit with us in the mornings for a while and would bring a devotion or she sometimes would bring just an object for us to take a look at or um, sometimes a breath prayer. She would do breath prayers with us, which you'll learn about uh, in our study as well. Well, one day I remember she came and she read the passage that I just read, that, that little passage about Sabbath. And we were sitting around a table in a musty little library. And I remember her reading it, closing the Bible, and then just sitting there and saying to us, over and over and over again, just stop, just stop. And the more she said that, the more anxious I got. I felt like I wanted to run screaming out of that room, that down those silent hallways and out into the the, the heat of a July, I think it was in July, summer in Alabama where the air was just thick and heavy and, and where you could smell the honeysuckle everywhere. I just, I both wanted to stay there forever and hear that word, stop, 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 and run screaming all at the same time. What I realized as I sat there in my Protestant discomfort, what I realized was that I had absolutely no idea how to do that. I had no idea how to just stop. And the amazing depth of the reaction that I had told me that I needed to figure that out and do it as much as I needed to breathe. Sabbath, stop, just stop. Sabbath is so important that some of the ancient mystics in trying to find words to explain the poignant beauty of it, claimed that even the air was somehow different in the lungs on Sabbath. True Sabbath, just stopping is not easy in the wild world of family, church, professional, and community responsibilities. I've been thinking a lot lately about how technology can make it especially hard. 
all of our ever-present devices can enrich our lives, but they can also make it nearly impossible to cease. There's always one more email to send or one more post to ponder or one more insane cat video to look at, even one more phone call or text to take. More and more in our society, the idea of stopping is either unheard of or, or often disrespected. Our daughter-in-law, the mom of an active three-year-old and 11-month-old, said once that her idea of Sabbath was being able to go to the bathroom by herself once a day. I get that. As a pastor for nearly 35 years, I've seen and felt the way that technology has shifted that experience that of being 24-7 availability and instant responses to pastoral or administrative needs. It's daunting. And yet the concept of stopping just stopping is baked into the very fabric of creation and is a quality of God's own being. So our love letter gives us a whole paragraph inviting us into that experience of Sabbath. We need to be careful to remember, y'all, that the biblical concept of Sabbath is not essentially about R&R. &R. It's not really about making sure that you get rest and recreation, although that is important for us. Sabbath is not taking time to go fishing or finish your scrapbook or try that new recipe that's been on your fridge for three years. It's not even at its heart about worship. Nor is Sabbath just a churchy word for Sunday. Early in the Christian movement, our ancestors celebrated Sabbath on the seventh day, generally from sunset on Friday till sunset on Saturdays. They celebrated that stopping on Sabbath. And then they also celebrated the Lord's Day on the first day of the week, the day of resurrection. Gradually, those two observances came together as one. And in so doing, I think we've lost a bit of the depth of both of those two fundamental rhythms and realities of life, Sabbath ceasing and resurrection life. So let's look at this word a little more deeply. Sabbath is a radical, regular day in which we reorganize our life toward God and in the presence of God. The Reformed history of Sabbath as a day of denial comes out of the understanding that to truly stop and to truly become aware of God, to truly reorganize all of life in the presence of God, sometimes we have to cut some things away. And there's truth in that. But it's too easy to make the tool, the giving up, the end in and of itself to think somehow that stopping work and not picking up anything heavier than a kumquat is what it was all about. We often get confused about that same kind of thing during the season of Lent, and suddenly giving up chocolate substitutes for creating space for God. And then in the wee hours of Easter morning, there's not a Snickers bar or a chocolate eclair safe within a 25-mile radius, and nothing has really changed inside of us. Giving up for its own sake as a grim discipline, especially, can obscure the deep, deep joy and renewal that permeates the concept of Sabbath in the Hebrew Scriptures. Sabbath is about a regular, radical reorientation of life. The rabbis called Sabbath a palace in time. They wrote that things tasted different on Sabbath, that the air smelled different on Sabbath. On Sabbath, in the midst of time, in the midst of our ordinary lives, we leave time and we enter into the great castle, the great palace of the kingdom of God. The point of Sabbath is not just that we need and should take a break, as true as that is for us. 
The point of Sabbath is that we are to regularly stop long enough to see life as a blessing, to see life as a gift and not as something that we build by our constant doing. The idea of Sabbath is rooted in the faith that God is indeed in charge of the universe. And we are asked to live as if all that needs to be done is actually already done. And all that must be provided is actually provided. Now stop for a moment and just take that in. I want to repeat that for you. The idea of Sabbath is rooted in the faith that God is indeed in charge of the universe. And we are asked to live as if all that needs to be done is actually done. And all that must be provided is actually provided. Now for some of us, that is easier than for others. For me, a type A person, any of you who know anything about the Enneagram, I'm a three, an introverted three, so I'm constantly exhausted on top of being a type A person. For me, life is so easily ruled by constant doing, by endless lists and nagging self-doubt and the inexhaustible need to accomplish. There's always something that needs fixing, always another call to make, another windmill to tilt, another injustice to address. For someone like me, Sabbath is both counterintuitive and completely essential, even if it is a gift that I have often refused to gracefully unwrap. Sabbath is one day without fail, every week when we stop see life as a gift and blessing, and acknowledge that all that needs to be accomplished has indeed in God already been accomplished. From the beginning, God has recognized how difficult it is for us to unhook from our daily responsibilities, to just rest in God's presence and provision and enjoy the gifts of life. When we do so, we learn to trust in a new way. There's so many interesting, unexpected, and profound things that happen to us spiritually when we take the wild, countercultural step of saying yes to keeping Sabbath. One thing that happens is that we begin to appreciate and sometimes even celebrate our own essential helplessness in a way. One of the most important points of growth in our spiritual lives comes in the Sabbath moment when we learn the deep spiritual truth that we are not in charge. I'm going to be having some surgery in just a couple of days, and I've been wildly trying to get everything together for the church, trying to get this video filmed, my voice is going and everything and all of that. I've wanted to just kind of wrestle it to the ground to try to make sure that all of my ducks were lined up in a row. But you know what? I can't. And on my way to church this morning to do this filming, I passed by another neighborhood church and, it, and there was just a little piece of grace in that regard on the sign in front of the church. It said, do your best and God will do the rest. I think that when we think about Sabbath, we could say, rest your best and God will do the rest. There's so many aspects to biblical Sabbath that we can't even begin to outline them in these few moments. Still, here are a few perhaps unexpected things to ponder. I hope you'll notice as you work with this lesson that a part of the intent of Sabbath is to orient our lives and hearts toward equity and equality. Think about it. When we keep Sabbath, when we cease to work, we declare that all are equal. Nobody is working. Everybody is provided for. 
When we declare that all are equal in the kingdom, we declare the fundamental truth that God is the one who provides everything. And, and life is not about what we earn. This text itself declares Sabbath for even slaves, even for the animals. It's not, y'all, life is not just about what we do. I'm not saying what we do doesn't matter. But life is not about what we do, and we can miss God when life becomes only about what we do. Life is not about what we earn. It is about what God gives. Now, in order to live fully into our love story with God, we must regularly, radically stop and remember this. Lean into this truth. Unlike the old bumper sticker from the 80s, the one who dies with the most toys wins, Sabbath reminds us that it is all about what God does. And in the realm of God, all labor and all rest are equally valued. Now, another thing to ponder about the call to keep Sabbath is that it is a commitment. It is a practice. Ceasing is something that one chooses. It does not happen except by choosing it. Sabbath is more than, although it cannot be less than, Sabbath is more than just making room for worship together in community. That is essential, but it is more than that. To keep Sabbath is about stopping work, but it's also about, is about opening ourselves up in such a way that we begin to recognize that there are things from which we must regularly abstain. To be a witness, but also to just be whole in this love story with God, we have to sometimes abstain from work. We know that. But there are other things that we have to abstain from as well that are a part of Sabbath stopping. We, can't, we have to abstain from things like worry or fear or resentment. What would it be like to regularly radical cease that? What if for one day a week, every week of life, we decided that because God is God and we are not, and because God is not asleep at the switch, then we can lay aside our fears and our worries and our nursing of our wounds. Well, that would be a palace in time indeed. Or, or maybe it would be something like just stopping the desire for more or stopping the desire to be perfect and perfectly available to those we love. What if we took a tech Sabbath and filled that time and space with, I don't know, something radical like talking face to face with a human being? The list is endless. And I hope as you study and share together in your study groups that you will talk honestly about those things that need to regularly be let go of so that we can rest in the love and the provision of God. Well, here is the thing. Here is the thing. Sabbath is about grace, graciousness, and just plain stopping trying to control the universe. In offering us this gift, God simply asks us once a week, without fail, to stop. Not for its own sake, but for God's sake. We are to stop long enough to see life as a gift and to feel at peace with where we are now. That is the rest of Sabbath, not a forced rest through gritted teeth or fearful discipline, but rather the rest of assuming wholeness and remembering that we are not God, thank God, and we need not, need not kill ourselves trying to act as if we are. In keeping Sabbath, we declare that the world is already whole and the brokenness of our experience has no ultimate claim on us. When we keep Sabbath, we make room for wonder. This is a love letter, y'all. Just as I was working on this part of the script for this video, I was piled up in bed with my laptop 
I'm getting ready, as I said a minute ago, for surgery in a couple of days after filming, and I've not been doing very well for several months, and I've been in bed most of the time except for essential meetings and Sunday worship, and funerals, and things like that. Well, I was typing away, and Robbie, my husband, came in, and he was scurrying around looking for something, and he said that this time that I had been laid up has been wonderful for him. Not that I'm sick or pitiful or in pain, but wonderful because he got to take care of me. He said, it's been like a vacation that I get to take care of you. Now, I'd been feeling like a burden and riding myself down the country for not helping with anything, not feeling much good for anything. And yet to him, he was just glittering with joy at getting to take care of me. It was rest for him. And there it is, y'all. There it is. God wants to take care of you, to provide for you, to let you just stop and rest and heal. That is the heart of Sabbath. So God gives God's self to us and asks us to do the same. God asks us not to trivialize our relationship with God and to take one day faithfully every week to stop our wild doing and striving and to live into and out of the relationship with God into which we have been invited. Just stop, God says. Just stop. I've got this, God says. And the 10 words then pivot as we'll see in the next lesson.